Don't try to stop by now. Uh, links for you guys. So it can be easier for us. to organize data in a form that makes it easy to search or look for subjects while at the same time being seeing a lot of diminishing effects. Uh-huh. Cool. Anyone else? Come on. I mean, it's, it's going to be interactive. I'm not going to give you a traditional lecture like a professor's time. I'm going to help you answering your questions and then make you learn. So that's why, uh, just, yeah, spit out. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Why do we need index? <coughs> part of a course search. 
So then you go to the jargons, uh, which are like very, very important, uh, web crawling, web indexing, relevance and ranking, and query interface. So from our last class, you guys remember, these were the things which were uh, emphasizing when we were discussing the default project, right? For our default search engine project. Like, what, what are the key components? These are the key components which goes in making a, building a system like a search engine. If you got to index the stuff that you want to search on, right? Then you are uh, gonna, so if you want to index, right? So you will need something to index on. So that's why you need crawling. So you crawl, you index, then you go for relevance and ranking with respect to what is the query that you have. You have a question? I'm trying to say what sense. But basically, web crawling is what the search engine does, it looks for stuff. Then web indexing organizes based on what it's found. Ranking and relevance places in the order of what, uh, uh, according to how close it is to what we actually question in the first place. Very good base. So crawl brings this stuff for us um, from all over the place. That hey guys, this this is all the stuff on which we uh, will provide you the search, right? And then all the search engines are what is it essentially? It's just a simple task, right? And there is some, but there is a lot of complexity goes in giving you the answer what you want. So a lot of the whole business goes right here, here. All the business go here. As well as in storage, how are you going to store it when you're talking about billion level document? Right? At that level, how are you going to store it? So uh, things of that nature. So that, that's why they, they are whole, that's why these companies are existing, right? I mean, they give us what we want, right? Google things, and that's where the whole business is driving. Um, how, how to make sure when you're typing it where it gives them relevant answers, that's what you want. So, I mean, that's where the whole business goes. And then the query interface, like, which shows us there is a nice user that's in Google or thing. Yeah. So, now let's actually look at, um, from the understanding of what um, other people like says 101, what it says about uh, what is uh, that next. Yeah. So, and how, I mean, what is the philosophy? Let's, let's see that. From a very simple perspective,
school. So now a question. Yeah. So I asked, I'm going to bring you back here. That's oh. building the web index CS101 identity, or what's the last one? Udacity? Yes. Oh, it's a website. So uh, I don't know if you guys know about it. So Udacity, Coursera, uh, these are two places for online courses, which have been put up by um, Ivy League universities yeah, and like other professors around the world. And uh, they, they, they are going towards like this online education model. So they have pretty cool <coughs> classes, video lectures. And you know, if you guys want to have some time to go with any kind of topic, you know, any kind of topic you can find there. So it's pretty cool. So I like that very much. So I thought of like this will be a simplest way to kind of explain you. So you you get the feeling what's happening. There was a string, it got chunked into pieces, and now the pieces kind of given the uh, gets the numbers essentially. Okay, so that's how you see uh, at the end of your book, right? What do you guys see? You see a letter uh, followed by sorry, a word followed by uh, in a particular page number. Right? The same way web indexing works. It stores, uh, so we, we collected all the URLs like in the crawling part, right, we are discussing. So crawl is what it gave us the storage uh, on which we want to build the index. URL and content, right? So in that content, how the index really goes about building. So that's the way uh, how it goes about building. It chunks the text. Once it chunks the text, then it kind of associate the numbers with it um, to refer to which ID it was referring to, the URL ID it was referring to, yeah? So that, that gives us a sort of sense of feeling. And there is a whole, whole lot of like um, management, like data management going on. Like you need to store uh, like your ID, the content, then uh, this particular key, uh, key being like your uh, V, whatever, like the term whatever we decided, like in the string split um, example we saw. So with respect to that particular key, key is a word, what is the value? And the value being the particular type of word. Yeah, data management goes, but conceptually, this is how it goes. This is what I, uh, I mean. I want to make you like a feeling. It's not a big thing. It's it's a uh, it's a simple concept. So it's basically we take the screen, chop it up in different uh, categories, and place all the values of the one thing we want to we want to place in that into a key of that category. Basically. Key value. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That's up. And okay. Let's see uh, what search he brings. Yeah. Uh, so all of you know. Him, right? I go. <laughs> so let's go, let's go take a look at the search We've been done before, right? Yes. Yeah. I think the most important thing uh, that we we're going to build a search engine is to have a really good one purpose to start out with. In our case, we use one of my lab, which at the time was considered smaller than it was today. But it was also very new and exciting. You see the trail going on? You kind, how you kind of traverse, right? So in your programming um, class, like in the data structures and algorithms, we would have seen like how the link list, right? The same way, it's kind of going from one node to another node, another node to. It's kind of keep going, and that's how this crawler works. And what we control when we're designing <coughs> a swap crawler, right? As if when we're collecting the data, we define these limits. 
that how long it should traverse, where it should traverse. Like if it is a whole map, then let it just uh, don't put limit. Let it be just keep going. Yeah. Basically, what it does is we we have a page. Yeah. We look on the page for all for a link or a node. Yeah. We go through that link or node. We look yeah. for all the information there. We go through it. Yeah. Go through it, go through it. All regular information we're looking for. All that information is. Well, basically, you can go through going through the link and link and link and link. We find everything, or we just stop at. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The stopping condition, we can define the depth of how much real it should be, yeah. and uh, that, that that can be defined. And as well as like, if you want to just watch well, the whole web crawling, it will take days and days. Just the way this Google uh, like crawlers or big crawlers, like these search engine crawlers, keep working. All right. So some, I, you get the feeling what's happening. And now uh, you might be wondering why I introduced this <coughs> lecture after the first lecture of understanding the concept of web indexing. The reason was I wanted to show, to show you guys like this part, like what he was just mentioning here. Right? So indexer does, indexer is based on the crawler. The crawling mechanism is trail of old documents that be on the web, which you're gonna fetch and store right, in a meaningful way. And once we do that, there's a whole lot of data management going on as we discussed like, right, with the, um, during that web index lecture. So um, in that web index video, the thing was we saw how the document was being split into parts, right, into chunks, and how the chunks are associated with respect to uh, ID, whatever is the ID of the document, and document IDs. So you do that, and then you get, like this is the kind of feeling that's what, what we are now uh, introducing in the next phase where you get the term, you get the all list of all the documents, right? And you might be wondering, should I, should I uh, show the user all the documents? We're talking about well, billion documents, right? We can do that. So what do we need? That's why we need to go to Basically, the linking between the pages, as you mentioned. Yeah. 
That's true. So the, the, the trailing node one to node two is the anchor text from page one, my home page to your home page connection, your home page to someone else's home page connection. It will be your That's what happens. So uh, then comes the part of, and in each of these, like we're gonna discuss the mention, like this, you see these are tools. We're gonna discuss, let's finish my project. Uh, project timing is like, let's finish um, in more of the, the gap, 15 more minutes. Let's finish the understanding of the concept. Then let's do some hints on it. <coughs> that will be exciting. So in the relevance and ranking, so you guys see when we query and we see the results. So why I uh, brought this point was, we saw in the video also that there is a term, and corresponding to that, there is a set of documents. Yeah, there's a set of documents. Now, which one should I give you first? Yeah. So I'm searching here Noesis, right? And Noesis shows a couple of pages, right? And now my page appearing, Vicky appearing, last people appearing, whatever these pages appearing, then you semantic sense web projects appearing. How these got listed? There is a mechanism of ranking going on here, and that is where the secret, the track secret, and things like that you would have, you would have heard about Google and other search engines, right? That's where the big fight is going. That how you can satisfy the user's intention of going here. I mean, it's a big thing. Um, how you can kind of really predict what a user is trying to, you know, find out. It's a it's a challenging research problem. And it's a big, big time problem. So people, I mean, it's still not solved, and people are researching a lot. And so and you search, and you get all these set of pages, and now there is this relevance and ranking. It should be relevant. So in the, once we, uh, so how do we, and there are these measures also, Christian and Nicole also. Uh, they are called. So what happens is you get the set of, uh, you have 100 documents, let's suppose, and you get a set of uh, 30 documents, let's suppose, as a relevant to your query, right? Are you going to show all 30? Can you show all 30 to the user in, on the user interface? Right, yeah. right? And uh, it's an interesting question, right? Uh, why do you just see the set of 10 results and then followed by uh, these uh, next pages? Why? Fine. So there, there are these researcher studies. Yeah, and even what? Ranking. Ranking? Yeah, but like why? Why uh, ranking is, is there? We need to do that, but uh, let's suppose if we got 30 results out of 100, we could have shown all 30 years. Good. Uh -huh. So it loads faster? It loads faster, very good, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Usually, like, well, I guess it doesn't say usually, but a lot of times the first place is like the one I need. At least that's how it is with me. I'm very, very good observation. So uh, there, there have been research studies, like user uh, user surveys, where they were observing the click behavior, and they observed that most of the time, users uh, the whole concentration. If you draw the distribution of the clicks, right, it lies actually just in this couple of you know uh, top whatever uh, this like ten results most of them. Uh, user hardly goes on the uh, next pages. So that's why I thought, okay, why do we show? And so he had a very good reason. What's your name? <coughs> um, Leonardo. Leonardo, okay, so he has a good point. Leonardo has a good point. Like, so, I mean, we can, if we want faster, I mean, it, it used to see here also, the personal results, and it used to show the timing also. I think now it's really not showing. So, 60 personal results out of 44,800 results. Yeah, we can't list 44,000 here. We need some meaningful. Uh, so, how did it select the 60 percent? How it did? That's why there is the whole, uh, you know, the business going on. So that is what the whole business going on. They do all this crazy algorithm to figure out which parameters we should focus on. For example, if I'm searching for Dayton, if I'm searching for pizza restaurant, right? So, um, should it show me somewhere in like uh, New York or Chicago, or should it show me here? I mean, the, so this kind of so all all these these are variables like we are discussing. There are all sorts of variables which go in this. Sounds good. Excellent. So getting back. <clears throat> so that's how we covered scrolling, indexing, relevance, and ranking. Very important part. And query interface. That also very important part. Right. 
How do you go? So now let's see if there's some uh, bit of what is on the technical side. Yeah. How does this whole crawling goes like in practice? We understood the concept that right? it stores, it trails through the document chain and from document one to document two to document three, keep traversing through the nodes. So it's just storing the data. And after it stores the data, so if it's going to make sure node one has this particular content, node two has this particular content, node three has this particular content, yeah? So you got a set of documents with the mapping to the content. Now the content is going in the indexer, the indexer is doing certain processing, that magic we saw what it's doing. It's kind of chunking the data and associating the uh, like URL ID, whatever is the URL document ID, the node ID, or other relevant attributes which could be useful for ranking, right? Ranking is important, so good. So it stores the metadata with that, yeah? Uh, because whatever node has a, a metadata, like this, uh, just in our example we took, uh, so metadata of the location, location of uh, Dayton versus location of New York, or, right? So, and this kind of information is also stored. So, things of that nature, where the data is coming from, and like, once we get that, then how do you parse that, right? Parse the whole the data, you chunk the data, put the store it, and now it comes to relevant relevance and ranking and showing the results. Fetching those 60 results out of 40 per um, Just the example here. Okay, so let's look at this guy, like uh, how this crawling works. So this tool is Nudge, it's called Nudge. And in this, it's a very popular um, tool. It's open source. And it's pretty popular as well. So, yes, this is what is Nudge. So, it's an open source web search software. Nudge is a project by Sumit Foundation, and it is basically for the purpose of how you crawl the data. Okay? So, I have provided all these links in the PPTs uh, that I sent you guys so that you guys can, you know, after the class also spend some time and, you know, get more feeling of what's happening. And resources, um, you see all these, like you can go to downloads, and from here, download a version. Uh, according, like you know, I think it's, it's best to just go with the binary, that's what I did, uh, to show you guys. And then, like 5.5.1, and in this I, I downloaded this kind first kind. I'm just interested in the binary. How, let's, let's see how it works. So, I installed it, and Pulling my remote machine. In the remote machine. Okay. We can we can. So uh, go to Nudge, download the Nudge, uh, the binary file, and then bring it to your uh, machine, bring it to your machine a folder where you want to install it, right? And then they will uh, just unzip that file. And once you unzip that file, all right, I'm happy. I'm done with see it. Okay, great. So I downloaded it and moved to the uh, directory where I unzip, unzipped it, and I'm in the folder now. Um, Apache Nudge 5.5.1, okay? And inside this, we see a bunch of uh, folders, bin, con, call, docs, clip, docs, plugin, and So in the, uh, we'll go through the tutorial steps. What you guys have to do after this class is go home, download it, and uh, do by yourself, right? Once we are done in the class. So you, you by yourself get the feeling what really happens. Um,
that's uh, tutorial. So coming back in the tutorial, what you're gonna do, you're gonna set up Nudge from binary distribution, so unzip your binary. So let's just follow the steps. Once you go home, just follow the steps. Download it, um, unzip it in the directory where you want, move it to the directory where it's, it's there, okay? And just set the permission, just make sure the permission issues are fine, yeah? I hope you, I mean, I'm sure you can do that. And then once you go into that directory and go to the second point, um, verify your Nudge installation. So just try it. So in my case, let's do, let's do bin Nudge. So in the bin directory, there will be, uh, in the bin directory, there is going to be uh, the script, the enable script for Nudge, which will do, which is useful to us. And that's what you want to use, okay? So you go <coughs> into uh, bin, you can see that. That's the enable one. You can see the color, right? The string is the one here. Yeah. You come out, and then let's follow this step for the shoulders. So we'll go to bin, and we'll go to nudge. <coughs> and then uh, it said, can we check the installation is correct or not? Like that? It's correct. Yeah. Like some double shooting tips. Like, so just see if we do, you can confirm a um, correct installation, see in the command. Once you do that, then you know, you can also change, like, and as I told you, the permission issue, make sure, you know, you can do ch more. So this is, I'm, I'm showing you on the Linux, right? You can show, you can do that. So in Windows, we'll have to do with Segwin. How many of you use Segwin? Some of you? Yeah, great. So you guys, yeah, on Windows, like, it's a kind of a uh, terminal, uh, Linux kind of terminal in Windows. So you do that, and it's important, you might see there may be some issues, like uh, if it won't be set up, there may be issues with the Java home uh, environment. So make sure you do, the, you do that. So just the way it showed on Mac, like how you can do on Mac, same way you can do on Linux as well. And on Windows as well, like if you wanna do. Uh, so you will miss okay, just do export Java underscore home and where's the directory for it. So in Windows, there is an important um, like uh, twist there. It, because in Segwin, when you do the path, right, when you write the path of the where it will be, it's, it's likely to be in program files. So program and files have space. So sometimes there is an issue in Segwin with that. Uh, they call it SegPath. SegPath is this issue. So you guys make sure that uh, you can export it as a, uh, yesterday because I thought that if you guys will be trying, you might have this issue. So I did figure out on Google, I, I just went to like on search and then I was trying to figure out if other people face a similar problem. Yeah, that's the first thing we should do. So I also went and checked, some people had this issue and they figured out if, they, if you do it like this, then it might come. Like so, it, then that's how I set it. Like Java, and then whatever JDK version I had, like one point, whatever. Yeah? And make sure this is this is what I'm going to show you guys. Is it visible to everyone? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And make sure you know, like this is how you do, like C whatever path is, and then the uh, the subsequent path. Yeah. I mean the program. Uh, basically, this is the focus. This is the focus that we need to make sure. So instead of program files, just do it this way. It will work. Okay, sounds good. Once you set up the um, Java score from the label, then basically we need, we can start our uh, uh, all the cool stuff of crawling, whatever you which website you can crawl. So before that, one more step you can try is uh, this crawl. Uh, try this command also, binnudge and then which binnudge crawl. That is, and then it will show the usage. Like, okay, you got to use, uh, use it in this form. Crawl, you enter directory, solar, and all that. We can't what is solar, we'll talk in a moment. So then you go here, go back, call your first website. So you need to do some config changes. So go to nudge, uh, con, in, in the conf directory, nudge.site.xml. Uh, nudge, uh, so here we are. Is it visible to everyone, right? I'm gonna make sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's just check whether the file is existing or not. So 
nudge? Cytot XML, yes, it does, right? So in this file, uh, let's do the entry the way tutorial is suggesting us. So we go inside and then we um, here this this part I introduced based on what was mentioned, what was mentioned in the mm -hmm. steps. So and add your agent name uh, in the value field of the HTTP agent not name property in this particular file. Very easy, right? You guys go in that con directory, go to nudge dot nudge site XML file and make this entry. Okay, after you make that entry, uh, then you can come out of that directory, um, of that file, and then you move on to creating a directory where you, you're, you're restoring the, uh, the seed URLs, right? And then uh, you do that, we'll again follow the, so we will do that by, let's create this URLs directory, so I did it exactly this way so that you, know, you guys can replicate uh, the same thing. You do that. So you see that I created this uh, URLs directory, um, MKD, and I, and I followed the same. And then um, in this, I created the c.txt. And what is it there in the c.txt? It's the website. Yeah, so I, I was scrolling our Loisus website. So I put the, let, let's use this uh, URL as a seed URL. Okay? Like, uh, it should be the third one, Loisus. Sounds good? Cool. You do that, you come out. And then um, you need to do one more step. So one more step here is um, how you make sure that it's uh, it will the, the limit constraint. Remember we talked about we don't want it to start crawling like the full lot, right? So we can actually put filters, and we can also control the depth. Even the, there are two types of uh, way mechanisms that we can follow. One is the depth, how long it needs to traverse. And second is also the filters which pages that we should be basically focusing on. Like let's suppose in the newsys.org really, I, I don't wanna call a certain particular platform website, yeah, possible thing. So it's for that process. So what you will do, say so edit the file on regex you are filter Okay. Um, let's Same steps. Go to uh, put the US directory which has the senior, right? And then you can uh, you can also do uh, like we don't need to do the we will just do the step first. Like put the URLs, then the directory for crawling where the crawling data is going on, okay? And depth and name. What are these parameters? Control parameters. Right? This is the way we were discussing when. Uh, when the crawler will be traversing through the nodes, right, of this whole web documents, this whole big document, so 
how it going to um, traverse in that interconnect, this whole interconnect. So that's why we control that. So top N is for how many pages run up, this uh, basically call it that level. And the depth is basically the label from the like usage.org, from the usage.org slash uh, about us, slash people, slash researchers, slash projects. In that you go right each of these labels, and then in each of them, you kind of see how you control this baby on pages one. Yeah? So everyone, everyone on the same page? Yes, no? <laughs> okay, right. Please uh, stop me if you feel you, know, you, you don't get it, like um, how we are going around now. I know right now you're not doing like your hands on, so that's why I'm doing hands on, so maybe it may not be great fun for you. But uh, I think it's important to see how uh, we are doing so that when you do hands on, you don't feel uh, any issues. That's what I make sure. All right, so we do here, let's call, and then URLs uh, minus DIR, and then in the call directory, put in the call, the call one directory, and in the call one directory, in depth, uh, minus depth, whatever depth, let's suppose we, we give just two depth, and then uh, uh, minus top end, we give uh, how many pages, let's see, give us three. So, that three, top end, we'll come to solid here and what is solid. We discussed last time, if you remember, it was a search engine system. We will really discuss it like, in a while. So, you see how the steps goes. After this, when you see, start seeing the segments, then basically the whole um, thing of the partition of the Excel. So, this, so what uh, the step will generate for us are these three folders CrawlDB, LinkedIn, segments. In the CronDB, all the data and indexes are going to be. In the LinkedIn, more data indexes of the data are going to be. In segments, like which, uh, like as it will be progressing through the uh, through the, the, the crawling mechanism, and that, like which uh, further pages and what, at what node it is, and like basically it needs to fetch what other nodes more. Thank you. Make sense? So yeah, it's running. Let's see. So yeah, right now it's like the developer versus Let's see. So gradually it will be also pulling some uh, like the labels as we discussed. Okay, so any question on that while that is going on? See, we went to like this about us joining us, financial assistance. Yeah? So it's going to those pages, pulling those pages for us. Now it will be storing and creating. Yeah? So that we can create index upon and Sounds good. Excellent. So let it let it go. Uh, meanwhile, what we'll do is um, let's explore further more so because we need to also make sure we finish in the time that we have. So everyone will go home and try this. Okay. I have put the links in our PPT. So it's there. You guys can go here, follow the steps, and see how it is happening. Okay. And <coughs> we'll come to the solar step in a while. Let's go back to our. PPT. Explore this. <coughs> so you go to tutorial, 
here. Let's see that and walk through the, then we're gonna see how we really gonna install it and all. So, go to Dutch. So you understand, right? When we are doing the query interface, it's a kind of a client side. It needs to be supported by a server. Right? So you have the backend, so it has this indexing, relevance ranking, and query interface, all things together. So it is in itself a complete application. It's a complete search server, like I said, complete application. So it has so it's, it has an instance that we need to initiate, and that's what it's telling us that we can launch to start.jar. So let's let's see. I think in my case it's already running there. Uh, Apache Solar example. Okay. So we can actually check that. And I'll, I'll tell you again uh, one observation which you might face as a problem so that I face too. So I'll tell you that. here and then basically um, follow the steps as this guy mentioned to us we'll start we go in the directory for solar first of all yeah and then once we go into the directory for solar and that's where it happened uh, so I can start it in my case the instance is already so let's see a new tab so this is the solar directory I installed it and this is how it looks like yeah, and we need to follow exactly the steps in the tutorial. Go in the example directory, yeah, and then you're gonna <coughs> see solar that apps were. So our focus is in the solar directory. Okay. So that's where we do the config and stuff like that. But here we can we can come here in the example directory and put the uh, commanders Java and start, and it will uh, <coughs> it will start the steps for us. So once we do that, then we come to the portal again following the instructions. Yeah. Come to the instruction, you can see the solar is running by loading local host and then uh, uh, in an 83 port number, solar and main. Okay, so it's going to bring the application of solar for us. Once it brings, so what it brings, brings application like that. Makes 
So that's what you will do. So that's the steps we have to go. So up till this point, uh, just, just make sure you do this. And this indexing data, they have some example like uh, application here itself. You can kind of see that. Oh, that's happening. You can just run it and you can also find it there. So um, I'll go to the part where you're connecting the NASH to solar. So you connect the NASH to solar um, here. So we have set up, we need to make sure that we set up. So again here, a very nice documentation is given how you check it, whether it is working, not working, yeah? So you come here, that uh, whether solar is set up properly or not, and then like you, know, you can check the installation. If you reach this page, that means it means it's installed correctly. And then if we have to integrate solar with the match, then we need to do this a step, and it's a very important step. So please make a note. Um, of this at this step. Once you copy uh, from the Nudge home directory conf schema.xml to solar example solar conf directory, make sure once you copy here and open that file, open that file once, and I, I, let me actually show you that. We need to change the version because the problem is with the version. Um, what we have downloaded is 1.5.1 version of the Nudge, and there was some issue. Because I face, so I'm just sharing with you guys, so you make sure you do that too. Otherwise, like you will be again, again seeing uh, exceptions of not, uh, I mean, solar is not kind of, you know, able to But the index is greater than our much. So, this is the file. Let me actually show you so that you also need to follow. Once you copy in the solar directory and make sure, just go to this line and change the version to 1.5 instead of 1.5.1, and then uh, it will basically help you do the uh, command that you just see right now. So, going back, nudge, nudge, nudge. Yeah. So, here you come and we need to integrate, right? So, we need to execute this command. So, how do we execute this command? So, in this command, our, uh, this instance, where our instance is running, right? This is where our instance is running. That's where we install, right? 8984. And crawl, crawl directory in crawldb, that directory is where we uh, did the indexing of the data, yeah? And, uh, um, sorry, the crawling of the data, not indexing of the data. And we need to give this an input for purpose of uh, indexing and the rest of the other steps. We go to linkdb, you give the for the linkdb also, crawl linkdb, Raw segment. So three important components. What we saw is output in the previous step, right? Uh, here. Yeah. So all those three important components they need to be as a parameter when we are giving to the solar. Uh, and <laughs> so this is actually if you want to directly, you know, kind of give to the solar, like. Um, directly kind of crawl and solar, solar will kind of uh, take care of the control basically for indexing at that point only. So you, this is the command for that. But what we are doing is we kind of, because I wanted to make sure you understand how crawling part is done and then we are moving to indexing part. Yeah, That's why I wanted to make sure that you guys understand that part. And then you come here, um, what is that command? This part. Yeah, and uh, so you, you you go to your directory, and like again, bin nudge, bin nudge home directory, apply solar index, instance, call db, give what was the crawl directory, and you run this command. Once this guy is done, then we will basically have the, all the indexes available to solar. So then what's going to happen? Then what's going to happen is our query interface will have results. 
so there is no sheet. Uh, I mean, style sheet, so you can see like you know, just your yeah, XML content that you see. We see the pages, like whatever the pages are listed here. Yeah. Like about joining an interest that has Cool? Yeah. Um, so are the limits assigned um, when you do a crawl? Is there a typical value assigned depending upon the task? Or um, yeah, good question. Yeah. It is. This is how the limit is assigned. So based on it's a it's what what is the application? So based on. So I assigned because I just do like that was two and uh, top pages were three because I want to just make sure a limited count. We should not be keep learning so that because if we assign more, the problem is it can be traversing right, and oh, yeah. it will take like a lot of. Time. So in the scope of what you do as a researcher, I guess, but like what kind of numbers do you typically get up to? Um, I think I have, what I played with, I usually just take like uh, five pages, like mm -hmm. usually um, particular label in that, you know, whatever the name is, mm -hmm. five, five pages are good enough. Like that also, I think generally the, what we are practicing here, three is like good enough. Okay. because. Um, like we'll hardly see cases like there will be no sister card um, x1 uh, slash x2 slash x3 slash uh, mm -hmm. something and then there will be something. So there will be less. Okay. It's a good one. Okay. Um, so now I think we need to cover up coming back to how this is happening. So you get a feeling of how much work, how this thing work, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So now uh, we need to get on to the using part, how this indexing was happening and uh, when you will be playing with the code, right? then how uh, it works. So let's see how we part of So using tutorial in five minutes, I provided you already the link. Right? So what are the most important steps? Anyone? When we are going to, we already understood the concept, we saw the video. What are the important steps for next? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's making the setup, right? Where are you going to really do the. Show the domain, the depth. So that's, that's the crawling part. We got the query. Uh, we basically, sorry, we got the. Uh, data of the crawl with us. We saw that, right? Our uh, solar is able to give us, send us the results, right? So what was the happening? Uh, the, I mean, what was happening really uh, between this result showcase on the UI and the crawl in the chat? So what are the key steps? Yeah. All right, so it need to be Structure, yeah. There will be a structure. That's the key part. When you be crawling, right? And we are showing these um, full. I mean, when you are starting the business of indexing, you need to make sure this is structured. Then only you know it will be easier. And the, how are you gonna really store the data? How are you gonna really store the ID, this mappings, right? How are you gonna really do that? That's why it's important. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. So, so the I think so. That's why I think you know what I I I will really. Um, take you guys to uh, the PP that we went to. I think that's more, um, that's very important. So I sent you guys PPT yesterday, if you've seen lecture references, anyone took uh, a look on that? Important part of this API and how it basically functions. The, I just want to focus, uh, bring your attention to the most important part of it. Okay, and so that you know, when you guys are playing, uh, when you come across Lucene, right, or when you go across the Solar API, you understand what is happening as the like a, at the technical level. Yeah, because technical level is important too. So. Um, 
uh, the tutorial is a brief overview that the students can see the for example. So I mean, this is a, these are our important classes that we need to worry about when you will be going through the using API and trying to work with it. Yeah. So I, I, I gave you already this PPT with you guys. So just bear with me right now and see the flow how it is going. So file document, index file, search file, and delete files. So let's go through each of them like step by step also. Like how really you know the listening classes go together, right? And in that like the structure that I was mentioning you guys, right? It's very, very important. We need to put a structure on it so that we can process in a meaningful way the data. So you got a document, in the document you got a uh, couple of fields, and fields are like name value pairs, right? So what will happen, um, let's suppose you crawl uh, these websites, we, we crawl these pages, like noises.org. In each of them, in each of these nodes in our tray, right, what was there? There was these fields, like a, a title was there for that page, or a section, paragraph was, or like, of any meaningful content or body text is there, right? So you can have feed, feed value, feed value, that kind of pairs. So document will have B, uh, A, B, B, A value pairs, right? And then you go for index and searching. So in this indexing, the, uh, the key um, part, the two key parts are like when, when we are talking about this, like how you're gonna go about this index writing and how you, going to go about index search, right? So we prepared, so we put this layer on top of the document, so this is how we're going to understand the document, right? Document has a field value, and like, no, sorry, name value, name value pairs, which of the documents, and in those objects, and how they are going to be processed by this major indexing component. So go to search, and in the search, like you have query and document object, okay, let's move further. Any documents, documents as a field objects, name value pair, we are done building a document. You would like it to index using the index writer, the key components index writer and index searcher. Now, here's a very important piece that we need to understand as we will come to here. So query parser, okay, not, let's not think about this one. So very, very important piece. So when you're playing with this API, make sure your analyzer is the same when you do the indexing, right? And when you're actually doing the query parsing. Why? Anyway, why? Somewhere you can actually get that particular data if you use a different analyzer, your results will be all out of whack. Uh, kind of on the same line. Anyone else? On the it, it won't match. Good point. It won't match the things because the analyzer is the key part for going about the um, the tokenizing the things, right? So if you um, use different kind of uh, analyzers in the query parsing, and when you are doing the indexing at that point of time, right? The things won't match. Uh, then that will be a major problem. So that's why you need to make sure that. Uh, you must make sure you use the same sort of analyzer for both indexing and searching. And you must feed the same sort of analyzer to the query parser that you originally to the uh, fed to the index writer. All right. So what you have to do? So using it is the indexing, searching, and retrieving, but it doesn't handle. So key components for you when you will be playing with the API, you need to make sure that you manage your processes. Like we will see that example too. In, in Eclipse project, and how you select the data files, how you parse the data files, yeah, and like once you got those strength um, from like the query side, how you gonna like once you parse that through the same analyzer, then you are giving to uh, the, uh, the API to give the results to right. So how you are interacting with it? So the, the the key part, I think once you understand that concept, uh, the key analyzer is the most important part, which need to be common when we are indexing the story as well as when we are querying. I think that's the, that's the most important part. Once you understand that, then the tasks are like very trivial. It's just, just common sense. Just think of the common sense, what you're gonna do. So you're gonna have file documents, and then you're gonna have syntax writer, then you're gonna have like the search files, right? And then we can also delete any, so that that's why there was this delete file. And, all right, so, so document objects we discussed. So name value pairs. So I don't wanna really, you know, uh, 
uh, go through, I'll quickly go through it. This is the reference PPT that you guys take a note of. And uh, once we go after the class, you kind of revise it so you understand it. I'll, I'll, I'll show you quickly in the course also how files are here and which files we need to really extract. Yeah, so using key features, Marnie, something thinner, body. So you see this, for example, if you just send us name value pairs, email for example, like to, from, subject, body, yeah. And so this, this is the kind of document that we were talking about. So the structure, so once those things become structured, then it's easier to process, right? So when it, when it comes to scale, yeah. So then minimum, as in the standard use an example would be, passed to the original document, modification date, content date, so kind of like more advanced feature. Like, um, what happens if you crawled yesterday and now you're getting crawled today and you have to kind of, I can make sure the things, if things haven't changed, then you don't need to really worry like, much about it. Like if content has changed, then you kind of really need to make sure that you update because when you will be searching your relevance and ranking that will be affected. And the old field, this is the easiest way to send out your users. Not gonna go through it. The field objects, we all discussed, we're not gonna go through it. It index for searches. So index for searches, so uh, you're gonna make sure if you wanna basically do so. Yesterday, Anne and I, Anne and I were discussing about how you could do some more advanced stuff, but I think I will leave uh, to the guys who do the project at that point of time we'll discuss with them. Right now, like, we don't have much time to if you want to kind of, you can create like field based, specific um, uh, analyzers. In, in like when you are doing the analyzer, you can do this field specific treatments. For example, um, subject part is more important than two part or from part. So in our example of the new So things of that nature. Then, tokenized prior next thing, a very key part. Then, stored in the index. Again, we will find and the method which will really go into the code. Um, index writer, directory option, and nice and token. I'm quickly just taking this off because I'm going to show the code. But yeah, you don't have much time. So, searcher, mikish, index readers, indexes, and this is done. Let's go through the code. So index file. So you will. So what I did, I downloaded the uh, version of using. Um, like go to the same. I provided the links to you guys. You can do that too. So go to Lucene, and then, so and also there is a tutorial link that, that's pasted. It's basically five, uh, Lucene in five minutes, how it is functioning. It is describing like how you are creating the documents, fields, and how you are kind of indexing this stuff, and how you're using the parsers. So, so in, this is how the code will be looking like. Uh, when you <coughs> created this, I just downloaded that uh, Lucene file, uh, sorry, Lucene, uh, dot, that is a file, not the whole source code. And, then I created in a Eclipse of Project, Java project, and then I imported that um, portion of the, all the data content of that particular directly into it. And here, the source, there were two packages, so you will have to change. Um, it will be like demo dot something something. So you guys make sure that you just uh, change the package name. Instead of demo dot something something, you just make sure or dot, you just change it. And here also you make sure you do that. So once you have done that, then you're gonna see the files will be having some problem with the um, like package name, package name is actually with soil, but like libraries and all. So make sure you include our uh, charts also in the build path. So all the you know dependencies are here. So now we see the clean code. In the clean code, here's, here are the files, um, which is the index files. Then you got like the important the file document file that we were talking about, the read files class that we were talking about, and there will be search files that we were talking about. So uh, in the index files, yeah, you go here and it has, so it's very easy to read code as well. So it should not create an issue for it, okay? I did that, like, I think we won't have much time to like play uh, completely whole the system here, but I wanna make sure that you understand the parts of it, yeah? 
So you go here and you go into this particular class, you go here and then you make sure the index direct is a parameter when you're running this particular code. So you guys, I think many of you know how to give parameter when you are in fact running inside the Eclipse. Just do a toy project. You know that, right? Some, some I think, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So you got uh, those five directory, whatever files directory you got, you put that files directory in that place, and then assign that as a parameter. <coughs> so it will be here in the clip, also you can set, you can set right click the project and kind of, you can set from here also. When you're running, you don't run the configuration, that's what it's in the clips. You do that, and then you come here, as a file log. So we need to make sure the file logs exist or not, so document directly, exists or not exists, is readable, not readable, all those permission issues, all, everything clear. Then we come to the index writer part. And in the index writer part, that's the most important class we were discussing in the vector reference we began, right? And then you make sure in the index writer class, you go to this, you open this directory, then this is the important piece. We make sure that the analyzer we use, is uh, it's the same, um, object, like the basically the same, whatever analyzer we used here, the same analyzer gets used in the, when we are doing the query part. Okay, we saw that as an important note in the PPT also, remember? Querying time and indexing time. Both time, we need to make sure that analyzer is same. I don't see any response, you forgot that it seems. <laughs> It's important, and we discuss the reasoning why, right? So you make sure to do that. Um, once the indexing is done, then we can basically finish this part. Go to search. Okay, so we can basically look at the structure of all of that. We don't have much time to basically go through, I mean, explain to each of the codes, but the major file I want to explain search find yeah so <coughs> so again coming back to the main method yeah for the search find class and then when we are giving all search by index directly, we repeat whatever uh, we wanna like bring the differences like, and then queries, norms, okay, those different, uh, forget about all the like, you know, advanced parameters, just write the easiest thing. And we, we just make sure that we write the easiest thing. And the easiest thing, then we, whatever index directly we had, we make sure we give, uh, when we are um, searching, we make sure that, again, the most important part, okay, it's gonna check for all Index reader part, you, you open the our index directory that you created, right in the previous uh, class we saw description there. And we open that, we open here, we did it, we analyze it again, we created the central object, but we analyze it, we need to make sure we use the same analyzer. And then when we are doing the query parsing, to make sure that, yeah, the version basically that particular analyzer and gets to you can see that. And then once you pass the query, then you kind of can, can do like, testing for step by step. Whatever document like you it's up to you, whatever document directly you want to keep in case we need it for indexing purpose. So I just gave you guys a glimpse of how it is. Go home, please make sure you do the nudge exercise as we did solar, right? Set it up and then also the UC. Okay, download it. Uh, download it then and the, the main part I already mentioned to you what you need to do when you import in the Part, and then focus on these files. Then just do this simple basic thing. Uh, we don't need to do any tensing then, so that our objective is first we learn, right, how the whole thing is working, and then basically get the sophisticated part. So when you'll be here, so Google is doing the default project, they'll be anyway exploring a lot more things in it. And for and those of you who are not uh, doing the default project, you guys can kind of make sure you do the simple basic uh, version of it, the whole exercise that we are talking about, as well as and do a little bit, if you want to do this, learn a little bit more, 
change some more things, where they bring in more parameters, and then see what happens. Just for you. You have to incorporate this in the project. In your project? Um, it will depend upon the project. Other questions? Anybody who has not formed the group, I saw one or two emails of people looking for uh, the group, so we should chat and see where you are. Right? And hopefully you started writing the Google Doc uh, as a team, if you just formed the team. Any questions about what else you have to cover? Descriptions? the exams went well for you? I didn't see much, I didn't see many complaints, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was easy. So that's also good. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see the numbers.